I hope you guys are doing well. I have uh, been working really hard inside Babe the Blue Box here. And uh, today's video, finally, after a year, I am gonna show you what the inside looks like. I, I am happy with the progress. Um, I'm gonna explain everything, but uh, we are gonna finally open that door, go inside, and I'm gonna show you what I have created inside, and I'm very excited to share it with you. I will be uploading this video with some connected internet. You'll find a link below in the video description for unlimited off-grid or mobile internet, how I upload all of my videos here at Basecamp, and uh, I, uh, <laughs> this is exciting. So before we go inside and check this out, just want to remind everyone that this is uh, my life, the, my my version of how I want to enjoy my property here. So um, over the last year, I've gotten some comments from people saying, when are you going to insulate it and turn it into a tiny house? And I'm thinking, I never... I never said I was gonna do that. So sometimes I have to fill in some of the gaps. Um, I, I, I'm not turning this into a tiny house to live in. My RV is right around the corner and it works perfect to, to live in. Um, I understand some people have done that. I understand some people have turned them into uh, huge garages with all their tools and everything. Um, I bought this shed for my own reasons and that is so that I can have a place to come into, to smile, to relax, to be able to appreciate a the, the time that I've spent on the road. When, it, when I'm here, I can go in here and I can go into a whole other world of memories and nostalgia and have a safe place to secure everything. And that's kind of been the key is to make sure that this place is safe. Now that we've got the monster solar array over here, what that does is that could potentially attract people not because the solar panels are very valuable, but because they know that those solar panels probably go to an inverter or charge controllers, expensive batteries and stuff like that. So security was number one. And uh, actually, just so you know, I am going to be leaving Starlink here. My buddy Danny, who lives here on site and acts as security here, he has taken over my Starlink payment. So he's going to keep that. I'm staying with connected internet on the road. And that it, you're gonna see that inside here to keep this building secure. I've got the cameras, I've got Simply Safe here. I've also got my night owl system so I can watch live what's going on. It sounds simple and funny, but you really do need to secure things first, otherwise there's really no point of having anything in value there when I'm gonna be on the road in other states, right? Speaking of securing things, I do want to thank my video sponsor. Thank you ExpressVPN for sponsoring today's video. They have helped to keep my online browsing safe for many years on the road. I did make one mistake a couple months ago when I was using uh, public Wi-Fi at KFC. I believe that is when I did not have ExpressVPN turned on at that time. And they did breach my Amazon account and I had to start all over. But that is not the case anymore. I use ExpressVPN all the time. I use it on my phone and on my laptop all the time, no matter what, especially when I'm using public unsecure Wi-Fi. It is super easy to use, let me show you. Just open up the app on my phone right there. We are going to scroll through, look at all these different countries and places you can pick. I'm just gonna pick USA Denver to secure it up. It automatically connects, it turns green. Now we are connected on my phone. I will do the same thing on my laptop all the time. You know, I'm not paranoid or anything. It just, it just makes sense. You know, it, it's, I buy a lot of stuff online and I have it delivered to my property or I buy it on the road and stuff like that. By masking my ID through ExpressVPN, I can confidently make secure online purchases without the fear of my data being sold to third parties due to ExpressVPN's secure server, a server that will not slow down my need for high speed internet on the go. And I've tested these speeds. They are seamlessly unaffected by keeping ExpressVPN on all the time. It really is a no-brainer. In fact, using the internet without ExpressVPN is like installing all the security cameras 
internet and everything and then simply not locking the door when I leave. It just doesn't make sense, right? Hey, find out how you can get three months of ExpressVPN for free by looking in the video description below or by going to expressvpn.com slash nomadic. Thanks again, ExpressVPN, for sponsoring this video. Now, back to what you all are waiting for. Let's head on inside, babe, the blue box. All right, let's do this. And again, remember guys, everything that makes me happy, you might not understand it. That doesn't make me wrong, didn't make you wrong. We're all different. It's gonna be okay. Look at all my magnets on my freezer. <laughs> and we're in. <laughs> How long have I been collecting Mickey Mouse stuff, guys? Years, 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 and years, and years. It has been a while. Yeah, so this Mickey collection, uh, it's safe to say, and I'll go ahead and say it, it, it's starting to get out of hand. And I mentioned on my last trip that I was slowing down the whole collecting process. Uh, but half this shed is full of Mickey stuff. And it is so fun to travel the country and uh, find just something random that has Mickey Mouse on it. So I don't have that. Of course, I forget sometimes and get duplicates of stuff sometimes. Mickey Mouse shower soap shampoo stuff. Uh, but, but this makes me smile to come in and because I can pick up one piece and I can remember exactly where I was in the country or what year it was or how I was feeling and how, how, I, how much I smiled when I, when I saw that one piece. So it might just look like a bunch of weird toys that makes no sense, but to me, it's a lot of value in this Mickey collection. And I have tried to organize it as best I can so that I can still see everything. However, I ran out of room and a lot of my stuffed animals are just kind of on the floor around here. In the future, I would definitely like to get those raised up. Maybe in nets or something on top here. But what started it all? This guy right here. This Mickey phone right here in Metropolis, Illinois at the Superman store of all places. This Mickey Mouse phone. This is also a Mickey Mouse phone. Oh, this is also a Mickey Mouse phone. Oh, you know what? This is a Mickey Mouse phone. As a matter of fact, did you know that this is a Mickey Mouse phone. This is even a Mickey Mouse, you guessed it, Mickey Mouse phone, Mickey Mouse phone. I believe I have all of the Mickey Mouse phones, except that this one was done also in a rotary version, but it's the same phone, okay. Um, got all my race cars here. I've got all my thermos cups, as well as all my tin, what do you call them, the, the lunch boxes. Oh, there's some plastic ones too. But guys, uh, many years and years and years of collecting stuff and everything has a special meaning when I come back and look at it. You know, I'm also utilizing, kind of hanging some stuff. I'd never done this before, but just to kind of give it that, that 3D look and everything. Remember this old record player? We went to the Walt Disney Museum in Marceline, Missouri, and they had one and it wasn't in as good as condition as the one I have here. You know, I don't have this building insulated or anything yet, as you can see, but it's still better than just storing all this stuff in a box. Look, I got three of these Mickey watch clocks and they're all different. There's the collector's edition, very rare. And then here's the one that most kids my age had on our wall. Just a massive amount. Remember I got this at Disney World last time I was in Florida. But I tell you what, guys, this collection is absolutely insane. I've, I've had friends come in here and just, you know, look and touch at this little bubble maker here. You know, all these old school things. It, it is so much fun to just stand here slowly, walk around and look at everything. Fort Wilderness patch. <laughs> So what do you guys think? Did I do okay? Displaying everything? Um, <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to go through everything. Mickey is half the shed, literally from that corner to that corner. So yeah, but 
You know, I wanted this to be a place where I could I could come in out of the RV, plop squat, sit down, and just look around and say, holy cow, Eric. Just reflect on the past in a, in a really good way, a way that makes me smile, you know? However, on the other side of the camera, as you guys know, Mickey is no longer the only thing I collect. Um, <laughs> so, I guess Mickey kind of transitions into, well, the brains of Babe the Blue Box. I had three videos on the inverter or charge controller, my power box, my DC break off, my 800 amp hours of lithium batteries there on the floor. So this little section right here is super important for the functionality of camp having power. But I've got my camel collection and it, it starts even up there with a couple clocks. This sign may not look like it, but it is lit up. This one right here lights up and it's a holographic design that, that changes. But basically going for the old school 90s Joe, Joe Cool, Joe's Racing. That's a NASCAR jersey there, but the, the smoking Joe's purple. This one I didn't even show you guys last time, but this is one of those that you put in the storefront and it's still got the adhesive on the side. And then whatever your business hours are, you get a black Sharpie and mark out the white in the numbers. And then you flip it around the other way and it says, thank you, we're, we're, we're closed, but come again. And it's never been used. It's pretty neat. Just a huge pack of Smoke and Joe's Racing matches, coasters, all sorts of fishing lures. I've got two very old uh, Zippo lighters here. And then the plastic ones that are lighters also playing cards, a cassette tape, more playing cards. Some really old stuff that I've got at antique stores. I don't buy a lot of camel stuff from antique stores because the prices are so high. This is an old F1 GT race ticket from 1992. Camel pin on it, Camel GT Racing, Sebring, Sebring. Chips and plates and tins and this holds beer. <laughs> Like, it's just, it's, it's pretty cool. And it's a, it's a unique collection with the purple and the, and the yellow. I guess blue also. Well, that was the only one really that I have that has blue in it, but yeah, my camel collection. This I'm gonna call a work in progress. This board used to be full of magnets, but I don't need to do that because I have this monster extra freezer in here where I could put all of my magnets on here. And this is another one where I like to just sit down and look at all the different magnets and all the interesting places that I've been around the country. Really makes me smile. So we'll get this area cleaned up for right now. It's got my game system, it's got my fan, just a, my battery charger and stuff like that. But I'll, I'll be working on that more. And then, yeah, Harley collection. The newest thing that I've started collecting. And uh, guys, it didn't take long. Didn't take me long at all, right? My mom just got me those three tins. Last time I was seeing her in Texas, I got Harley Davidson beer unopened. Yeah, guys, I got some stuff that uh, didn't even know existed. It's a really cool motorcycle radio. It's an, it's an FM radio in the shape of the gas tank, and it's got the Harley Davidson logo on it, a jumbo lighter there. Here's a, an unopened pack of Harley Davidson Cigarettes, unopened. This is crazy, right? Some darts. This bag I got last, or this, when I was in uh, the Pacific Northwest at a Harley shop, Seattle, Washington, uh, Harley Davidson, my boots, some playing cards, a little player right there. So yeah, I will definitely keep collecting Harley and camel stuff to let that collection grow. Over here, well, m more on this la uh, later. <laughs> But this last one here, uh, this is just everything interesting that I've collected that's not related to anything, right? So I got that at Walt Disney World. Uh, I got this also on the cruise. Uh, we got some other icons here. Here's, actually, this is also where I'm storing all of my security stuff. So I got the monitors here to look at everything, but this also goes to my phone and the cloud and the NVR right here where we got some more homers and Buck Adams there. Remember when I got the uh, Dole Whip? I love the old Batman series there. Olympia beer. 
That's Disney. That's Disney. This. Oh, the Big Texan. Yeah. So just remember that old bowling game I had? Let's see. King's Auto Shop had a high score. And I think Wayne's on here, too. Josh has a score on there. And there's RV Pepper Wayne, 225, who had the high, high score. So just some other things there. And then um, this. Dang, it still chalks me up. Um, give me just a second. This was even hard to put up, guys, believe it or not, because just so many memories. I miss him, but... Jax has his spot here, and a um, bunch of little pictures in there. Sorry for the glare. His old banana. There's his uh, Mr. Squack, Mr. Quackers, excuse me. His collar's up here. There's a, a bottle cap right there because he loved chasing bottle caps. Of course, all of his different IDs that he had and everything. Um, his ashes are not in here. Actually, I will show you just a second where his ashes are. But then also hanging down is... <sighs> Sorry, this... glad the camera's not on me, but his last Mr. Quackers and just a bunch of pictures of him as a kitten. The good days. <laughs> Cute little guy. When we were in uh, Tombstone, there's Jax. And me, he's in the wash bucket right there. Somebody made a tapestry here of Jack's. Of course, Paws. This is the original that my dad painted with acrylic paint. He has all seven toes there. You can see all seven toes are in it with Yoda there before the wrap. I got a, some other stuff I still got to unload. There's this one that Homer made for me too with the angels. And... Uh, yeah, it's getting it's getting easier to look at this kind of stuff, but it's still just it's very difficult. It's still hard. I tell ya. I don't know when it ever gets easier, guys. Pets are I don't know. However, let's take a break, go outside. Because I have uh, officially moved Jax's ashes. Remember I told, talked about having this little border around here? And we've got our solar array, and uh... Yeah. <laughs> Jack is <listening> under here. <laughs> it's gonna get easier. It's gonna get better. Jax is right here. <laughs> and uh... I'm gonna develop this area a little more. I really, really want to have a picnic table because he loved picnic tables. <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm gonna take a little bit of a break here and change my shirt. I'm getting tears all over it. Uh, this video is on a delay. Hopefully Texas pulled out a win with Houston, but I don't know yet. Um, yeah, let me get back to you. Hang on, okay, going back. Last part of this shed is so I should probably go back and say that this property, one of the cool things about having this and not having next door neighbors necessarily. I mean, I've, my nearest neighbor is probably, let's say a half mile, probably a quarter mile away is my nearest neighbor. So, you know, that's a, that's a wonderful thing about living out in the boonies is that you can have a radio going outside. We do outdoor movies, but I do like my loud, loud, loud music, as many of you know, and so, you saw I've got my Xbox system. Well, what works really well for me is to set up my drums and my projector. I've got a projector screen that hangs from here. Uh, close, up, close that off, turn off these lights. And even, in the, even in, the, in the daytime, I can jam. And guys, I love playing the drums. Now I, I will play the, the guitar. I've got a couple guitars, but I cannot hit that orange button. So I can only do medium on the guitar. I can do hard on a few songs on this with the bass pedal. And uh, I tell you, I've only done it like three times in here, but it is so therapeutic to set that up and jam, and I mean jam to some music, guys. Like some people like to punch a pillow or uh, break stuff or something. 
I like to listen to music loudly and play along on the drums and guitar on Guitar Hero. Well, uh, Rock Band. Rock, rock Band is the one I like most because it has the other players that you can play with. But, I mean, I'll, I'll play with myself. I play with myself. Whoa. I, mostly, I only jam with myself. And I like to do it in here. And uh, I want to do it right now. No, it was fun. It was fun. I, uh, actually, <laughs> I had to pick a different song to put over that because otherwise I'll just get copyright flagged and then you won't see anything and then the video will disappear. So I went into my music library that I own and I found another song that's also 125 beats per minute that's royalty free. Put that and I overlaid that on top of Rammstein's Du Hast, which is what I was really, really playing in here, which felt really good. <laughs> So anyways, that's Babe the Blue Box in its current situation here. Um, I, I don't want to make any claims and say things will definitely change in the future, but um, I have also thought about, you know, boxing all that back up and using this for something different in, in the future, if that were to happen. But right now, I'm getting a lot of personal enjoyment and satisfaction, and it makes me smile to see it in its current state right now. So for right now, it's going to stay that way. And um, if things change later, of course, you'll find out. I don't think they will, though. I think if I ever find the need that I need another building, I'll just get another building. We can have as many of these 200 square foot buildings as we want on our property without a permit. There's a bunch of, there, there's like seven things. There's only seven things that, 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 like, if it's over 200 square foot, you have to get a permit. If your fence, if you build a perimeter fence and it's over four foot, you have to get a permit. But anything four foot or under, no. We can't have swine in Apache County for some reason. Pigs, pork, we can have chickens, but the, absolutely, you can't even get a permit. Nobody has swine in Apache County, pigs. And, uh, and, there's, and there's some other rules as far as permits, but I want to stay under the radar as much as possible. My taxes doubled just with the septic system that got filed with the county. But again, I did that because it was an absolute necessity. I'm not going to dig holes in the ground and bury my, my poop from the RV, you know. But, and then also if you wanted to bring power, and I did get a price code. I think I mentioned a couple videos ago that I didn't know how much it was going to cost to get from 400 feet away. In fact, if I stand right here, can you guys see that power pole right there on the, on the just on the other side of my other shed? That's where power's at. That's 400 feet away, but it's the other street on the other side. Well, the co-op got back to me and it's going to cost me $17,000 just to get it from there to the front of my property. Plus um, roughly six, $6,000 to put the pole and the meter here on my property. Now I'm not saying it's out of the question, but $25,000 to be dependent on the county's power or I can just put in two more of these arrays, add batteries, and never have to worry about power from anyone when I'm here, which is probably what I'm gonna keep doing. I need to make a decision what we're gonna do here, and it's gonna be my decision for my own reasons. Do I wanna wait it out? Or, now that I got Danny here full time, to keep an eye on everything, make sure that this functions, and uh, maybe go somewhere else this winter. You know, so I feel like I don't play enough with Opie and Tara with with toys. A lot of the times I put their toys away because it'll keep me up at night. You know, if they're playing with the bell ones or the ones that make sounds. But I keep them in a cupboard. I keep a couple out that are very, very quiet feather toys. But the interaction toys that we play with, I don't think we play enough. <laughs> and that's my fault. I mean, Jackson, I played every single day. 
But now that the two kitties have each other, they really don't need me to play at all. They do laps in here. I mean, Opie gets done wrestling with Tara and he's literally like, <gasps> like he looks like he's gonna pass out from exhaustion having so much fun. I, I wanna play with the kitties right now. Let's get some toys. See, Opie will play, but there's, there's only certain toys that he really plays with. He'll go through all the feather toys and not bat an eye, but these little weird fuzzy, I don't even know what you call them, little balls. Like he'll pick them up with his mouth and run across the RV with them and drop them somewhere else. I have to keep getting more of them because they're definitely his favorite toy. He hasn't learned to play fetch with me necessarily. Like he won't drop it in front of me, but uh, it is an interactive toy. And uh, believe it or not, Tara is really the one that goes after the toys more than anything, like especially feathers. Oh my gosh. Any kind of artificial feather is, is Tara's jam. And uh, it's so much more fun waving stuff in front of her and letting her go crazy than it is just, you know, her messing with it on, on, on the bed or on the ground or something. But she is a playful little bugger, I'll tell you what. What do you guys think? Should I uh, pack it up for the winter? Go see some friends down south? I think it would do me good to take some time off the property. It's pretty awesome what, we, what we've been able to do here in just the short time being here. I wouldn't mind taking a little break for some warmth. I do not want to winterize my RV, put heating pads underneath everything. I'm just not in the mood right now. We'll see. Bye guys.